Yellow creature gobbles dots while being pursued through maze by monsters. Believe it or not, those things are really happening on 200 electronic video games here at Chicago Fest. What you see here is part of a national phenomenon that we call high-tech wreck, a phenomenon that had to happen when the TV set married the computer. It starts with a quarter, and it ends up as a national industry estimated at seven and a half billion dollars a year. Video games, they seem to have captured America's imagination and its pocket change as well. Right now, the country's two hottest games are Chicago games. There's Defender, a space battle game made by Williams Electronics on the north side. The object is to fly over your planet, shooting down the enemy spacecraft, which are trying to capture your humanoids. Defender is prized for its nifty sound and visual effects. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot, the super marsupial, the wonder from down under, the rocket with a pocket. You may remember me from my last adventure where I just, oh, I don't know, saved the world. You're welcome. And now, I have to do it again. <coughs> virtual reality into homes around the world. He is our Alexander, and he will conquer the countries of our imaginations one by one, and we will dream him into infinity. And using it to seize power through intimidation. This better be good. I'm gonna do some cutting now, okay? Seduction. Pull him in. Show him. Oh, wild blue sky. I want you to touch me. And mind control. I have seen the future. It's chilled for me. journey. You've come a long way. I am a friend, a close friend, one who knows you. Yes, Joshua, it's me, Grandma. You remember me? Joshua, you are in heaven. Yes, heaven is real, very real. There are millions of people here. They all come the same way. When I was 16 years old, I gave my life to Jesus. I still remember the day. just say smoke them up boys this one is the peacemaker called the close out you know whether it's 420 in your neck of the woods or not you are ready to hook up on this one for sure it is the peacemaker now the best way I know to make peace obviously is sit down with your friends smoke it over I'm sure you can work something out. 
And the little heart, well, that's an indication of Valentine's Day. What do you think? Well, it is a true uh, machete, or pardon me, tomahawk-style peace pipe utilized by Native Americans from back in the day. It has all the traditional looks, and it looks like it would function. I haven't tried it out, but it does look like, hey, you just load the bowl and you're ready to go. Of course, now, we'll send you the pipe. You're responsible for loading it. <laughs> Check out this tomahawk. Pizza man's coming. The pizza man's coming. I got my best friend, my helper, my son, Bo. Bo's in the house. Bo, I am so excited. A lot of hard work by a lot of great people. We're launching a new refined PapaJohn.com website throughout the world. You know what's most exciting? I get to do it with you. You mean you get to watch me do it? Hey, I'm high pizza, low tech. I'm high tech, high pizza.
The following is a special presentation of the Sci-Fi Channel. Welcome to Anime Week on the Sci-Fi Summer Movie Blast. Konnichiwa! Welcome to the Sci-Fi Channel's Anime Film Festival. I'm the live-action anime girl and your guide. My name is Apollo Smile. I love tonight's movie. It's a classic intergalactic adventure, Galaxy Express 39. The story is based on the comic book or manga created by Leiji Matsumoto. He's also the creator of the series, Star Blazer. All aboard, everyone! The Galaxy Express 39 is about to leave the station. It's really us? So, her true nature's unleashed. How intensely beauteous! Blast! Roots! Get really at this instant! Damn it! This sucks! Piss! They aren't here? Now I'm unmuted. Hello. It's time to play some Metal Gear Survive. It's been a while since I've thought about Metal Gear uh, in any real way. Instant, we finished the Metal Gear Solid 5 Let's Play. I, my brain just, it took all of the Metal Gear stuff, it just packed it up put it in a box and just put it in the back of the clo the closet. Uh, oh yeah, all these VODs are going up on YouTube. I streamed uh, Wednesday, just a couple days ago, uh, and we finished up Fear. I still need to get that uploaded later today onto the channel. But yeah, it's been a while since I've done any Metal Gear stuff. The most I've touched Metal Gear, any Metal Gear games, since we finished MGS5, uh, is whenever I start testing out shaders and emulators and I use Metal Gear sometimes as a, uh, a way to test that stuff. Um, so, Metal Gear Survive. It's kind of, it's definitely the black sheep of, you know, the, the series, mainly just because it was the first and also only Metal Gear game to come out after Kojima left Konami and, you know, all that drama that, I have, you know, covered a lot in the Metal Gear Solid 5 Let's Play. So, I've only ended up touching this game for maybe two hours several years ago when it first came out. Um, and it didn't seem bad. It just, it's just kind of weird. Um, I, I need to go back and, like, reread some stuff. But, you know, people sometimes attribute Metal Gear Survive to just being like, well, here's Konami plundering the corpse of Metal Gear Solid now that Kojima's gone or whatever. But this game was apparently originally an, an idea pitched by Kojima before he left. Now, of course, 
after he left and the game still had to get made or did get made based off of some of his original ideas um konami did put a lot of their very konami ass stuff into this game for instance uh when i loaded this up uh in preparation for the stream i could not start a new game because there's only one save file and so i had to delete my previous character and i thought oh well it's a game that's heavily tied to online servers and stuff maybe you know they just for whatever reason having multiple save slots slots would would complicate that stuff but no you can get multiple save slots you just have to pay real money for them so you know konami uh, and there, there's a bunch of other shit you can pay money for in this, if I remember correctly. It's not, like, constantly reminding you, just like, you know, you know, there's no loot boxes or shit like that. But there's a lot of things that can potentially nickel and dime you, depending on <laughs> how quickly you want to get through the game. Yeah, pull the lever. So, uh, I guess we're just gonna jump right into this. I can stream until about 4.30. Let's just make sure that we also have, um subtitles on uh if i know which fucking thing subtitles are on okay oh this is gonna really trip me up playing this because i still have a shitload of muscle memory from metal gear solid 5 and this game well built off you know that the framework and assets of metal gear solid 5 the control scheme is different and it constantly throws me through a loop uh, oh, what time zone am I in? I'm in Central, so we have about two hours-ish to stream, maybe a little bit more. I don't have to be leave and go somewhere until five, but... So yeah, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll just jump in. For people that don't know, this game is lightly looped into the plot of Metal Gear Solid V. I am not muted. I am just reading the text. Um, yes, this game... It, this game begins right at the end of Ground Zeroes, basically. I also remember, if I remember correctly, this game actually starts off with a lot of cutscenes, especially compared to MGS5. I guess a pseudo pseudo historical sequence of events. No, only compared to... Cutscene length only compared to stuff like, uh... Metal Gear Solid V, or specifically Phantom Pain, which... Or not Phantom Pain, uh, Ground Zeroes, which has, like, a five-minute intro, and then you just start playing. Where this is, I think, like, kind of a solid half-hour of light gameplay with a lot of cutscenes. So I really need a second monitor for this. This game's taking up most of my screen, so I have to load up the chat, the chat my fucking cell phone. Yeah, this game was made by Kojima Productions, which, you know, after Kojima left, it got renamed uh, to just some, you know, Konami studio. 
but yeah, Let's get a lot of the leftover staff of Kojima Project. Uh, Kojima Productions that was still at Konami developed this game. If I remember correctly, someone lifts up a clipboard in this cutscene or a, a cutscene that's coming up soon that's got like the first letter of every name on the clipboard spells out like Kojima Productions forever, like KG Pro forever or something like that. bump up the game audio a little bit all right yeah just like the start of phantom pain we have to make a character so good old hank is our name That's me. Are you sure that this is the one, sir? Yeah. Thanks. What are you touching? Good to see you again. Forgive me for what I'm about to do. You okay? Get yourself together! Cover me! Like, I will say the idea of, you know... A spin-off Metal Gear game focusing on what happens to all the Mother Base soldiers left behind at the end of Ground Zeroes while Big Boss is in a coma is, like, not a bad idea. But what goes on in this game is, like... <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't quite fit. It's also really weird to see this Ground Zeroes cutscene, but with completely different music on top of it than what was used in, you know, the original cinematic, because the music in this game is not in the same caliber as the other Metal Gear titles, from what I remember. Feeling a little nostalgic looking at this cutscene. God damn, this this game of Phantom Pain was like just the let's play alone was like two years of my life, you know, in the background. And even before the let's play started, like I have like a full notebook of notes and how I want wanted to do do that let's play
All right, let's make a Metal Gear man. I, if I remember correctly, all of the base character customization components are the exact same ones used in uh, five. There are a lot of extra cosmetics they added to this game as part of the whole microtransaction thing. Uh, I just love this guy right here. I'm, I'm just going to use this dude. Uh, yep. Something that bothers me about customization in a lot of video games is... Have you ever felt that, like, the beard options are always kind of weird and fucked up? There's always, like, one beard that's super fully grown out. Never, uh, like, up on the cheeks, though. It's always trimmed a little low. And then everything else is a fucking mustache or, like, mutton chops or something. It, there's just never... <laughs> there's only ever, like, one full beard option of a certain length. And it's always really irritating to me. At least this one lets you adjust the length, though. I like that. We're gonna be an old guy. I don't want to mess too much. This this isn't this is the game I'm working on, so I don't want to mess with the customization too much. Hmm. You know, I never really tried to see if you can make an absolute monster in these games, though. I think the the customization is limited enough that you can't really do that, though. Like, like if you put everything to the left, you know, you're not going to get anything that weird looking. Well, okay. It's a little. Not nearly as, as freakish. That's still a fairly normal video game, though. It's just that the, the actual tip is really narrow and kind of pointy and stuff. Uh, but nothing that bad. Let's see here. <laughs> like, yeah, this is basically just made to make a bunch of decent looking normal people with nothing super crazy. Well, here, actually, if he's named Hank, then we at least need to... Right, they only have five color swatches for hair. They don't have, like, an RB RGB pick or anything. Because if I could have some more extra control over this, I was going to try and make all of his hair like that sickly goldenrod I use for Hank the Chog. But this is as close as we can get is just blonde... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, yeah, it's only <laughs> those hairstyles. Pretty limited. I think there's a lot of other stuff that gets added through, like, the cosmetic shit, but I don't quite remember. We got anybody who's really wrinkly? I guess this is as wrinkly as we can go. Let's see. Yeah, all the same stuff from 5. We got the, the skull camo face paint, which, you know... That might be good. Vulcan Raven tattoos. Hmm. Right. Uh, what does this tattoo say again? I have to get rid of the beard. <laughs> uh... Gunner's High. I thought it said Gamer's High. <laughs> yeah, no tramp stamps or anything. Sorry, chat. But we do have Gunner's High, which is a very stupid tattoo to get. Need cover! Give me cover! I need cover! Cover me! Cover me! Copy! Acknowledged. Got it! Understood! That won't work! What's wrong with you? No can do. No way. That won't work. I see an enemy. Go, go, go. Yeah, we're gonna go as deep. What's the highest pitch? Go, go, go. Sorry about that. Good luck. Thank you. I need cover. Understood. That won't work. Hmm. <laughs> What's wrong with you? No can do. No way. Hmm. He does sound a little like Morden from Mass Effect when he's pitched up that high. That 
won't work. All right. Here, real quick. I'm going to... We're going to make a poll. And I'm just going to put up Mac high pitch or low pitch. And everyone just vote if you want the highest pitch or the lowest pitch for this voice. And we'll have this up for th uh, <laughs> two minutes. We're starting this poll now. Here we go. Everyone vote. Pretty sure high is gonna win, but I still, I just wanna see. In fact, I'll keep playing the voices just so that everyone gets another nice sample. I see an enemy. Go, go, go. Sorry about that. Good luck. Thank you. This is as low as it goes, by the way. I need cover. And this is as high as it goes. I need cover. Understood. That won't work. I see an enemy. Go, go, go. <laughs> well, everyone's voting there. See if there's anything else I want to change about this guy. Let's see, jawline. Oh yeah, we have these kind of crooked jaws. I like they have that as an option at least. Pretty strong jaw for such a high voice. <laughs> Little mouth! Okay, we can make this guy a little goofy. Let's... No, he needs to be smiling. Yeah. Alright, we're, uh... Getting close to the end of the poll here. Let's view those results. Highest pitch wins! 78%! 96 votes. Yep. All right, let's go back to that voice. Sorry about that. Ooh. Good luck. Thank you. Hehe. <laughs> I need cover. Understood. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's actually try and fuck this guy up a bit, <laughs> a bit more. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see here. Smaller chin. Less jutting. Hmm. Yeah, pull that up a bit. Pull it in, too. Um... Can we make his eyes smaller? Hmm. A little more squinty, for sure. Yep. <laughs> Put those up as high as we can, I suppose. Wind them out. Yeah, eye glint is just... The way light is reflecting off his eye, basically. Uh, one eye, a different color than the other, because heterochromia is extremely cool in anime. Uh, let's see here. Uh, can we get those eyebrows raised a bit? 
Yeah, inner bra eyebrows, and then... Yeah, the tips are all the way... All the way up. Pull us in a bit, maybe. Are we gonna be a weird little bald man? Or we keep this hair? Hmm... Hmm. Let's make a weird little bald man. I don't know. I'm thinking we might need the... Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I think we need the mutton chops so that Gunner's High is fully exposed so everyone can easily read... You know what? Mutton chops, blonde, weird high-pitched voice, tiny little lips, eyes way up. And then... Yeah, I think we stay with Gunner's High, although this is good too. He is looking a little bit more like he was a guy <laughs> in the American Civil War. Hmm... All right, one more poll real quick. This will just be for another, like, m minute or something. New poll. Gunner's High or Skull Face. And we'll just, we'll have this go for, like, just a minute. Gunner's High or Skull Face? Where are we going with? This is Gunner's high. It's right on his chin. It's really dumb and a very stupid position for a tattoo. But then we do have the skull face camo from Metal Gear Solid 3, which is pretty good. I really do wish it said Gamer's high, but... Gunner's high is pretty good, too. If you squint, it looks like Gamer's. All right, looking at this poll that's about to end it is overwhelmingly Gunner's High over sc uh, Skull Face. Unless another 70 people suddenly vote in the next three seconds. All right, we're, gu we're Gunner's High. We're high on guns today. I think this is what we're going with. I don't want to spend too much time on character customization just because I want to play some of this game before I have to stop streaming. <laughs> Anyways. Let's hear the voice one more time. Just to see what we got here. That won't work. I see an enemy. Go, go, go. Sorry about that. Good luck. Thank you. I need cover. Yeah. All right. That's Hank. Hello, Hank. I wonder how many people in the chat here don't know what the premise of Metal Gear Survive is, because, like, it's about to, be, about to be revealed to us pretty soon. At least one person doesn't. That's fun. Something's going on with my face there. <laughs> Something's going on with the, the mask and the eyes. Oh no, what's happening? To my face! <laughs> what? What's going on? What happened? What happened to my skin? Th that's not supposed to I'm fine in the picture. Is my GP- No! 
Is my GPU melting? What's happening? What's wrong with my face? <laughs> Yes! Please let it like be like this always. I want to be the weird polygon man. I made up entirely of nano machines. Oh fuck yes! Please let this keep happening. What did I do that caused that to happen? Thank you for following everyone. Signal acquired. Collecting the package. I kind of like this cinematic just because it's calling back to an with you. that Soon. early security camera, like, cutscene style from MGS1. subject in suspended animation but it won't be long before that ends and then a threat to mankind becomes reality that won't be the case why not I told you this soldier is a traveler a traveler who is going to enter the gates of hell for us what a ridiculous are you serious after how long it's been since we've heard from the core with the energy we have left, we don't even know if anyone we send would make it through. And you want to risk the fate of the section on this? An infected? That is why this one is the perfect candidate. This soldier cannot live in our world anymore. To put it another way, no one is more qualified to carry out a mission on the other side. Am I wrong? There's one other advantage that no one else has. Look at the left arm. It's just an arm. That arm was lost six months ago when it was severed. What? And yet, it regenerated. A result of the infection stimulating tissue growth. Nothing we haven't seen before. Except this time, we're talking about human tissue. Evidence of remarkable adaptation against the infection. With the dead running rampant on the other side, this one is more than capable of responding to the threats there. 1943, Philadelphia, teleportation. That experiment gave us our first glimpse of the future. Bumped up the uh, game audio a little bit, by the way. Give us everything we've been after ever since. All we've done is continue to fail, including six months ago. We cannot take a chance on ideas with no basis in reality. There is a basis for this. Those who have descended to hell are able to see further than others grew in. Another one of your prophecies. Enough of that nonsense. Oh shit. Diabetes, thank you for raiding. Hello everyone. Uh, it's me, Chip Cheesem. We are checking out Metal Gear Survive. There's still some Metal Gear content to, to ring. Ring the stuff out of. Better yet, this could lead directly to the power that unites the world. I'll get the section on board. After all, you acting on your own authority would be unforgivable. Yeah, there's a little Easter egg in the left, middle left screen on the cutscene right now with that little cardboard box. Take matters into your own hands. Don't take matters into my own hands, huh? How blissfully unaware they are. The future is in my hands. It's true, I never did Portable Ops either. I've never done the Game Boy Color Metal Gear Solid game. I've never done Metal Gear Acid 1 or 2. There's still some Metal Gear stuff I definitely want to get around to someday and uh, potentially do Let's Plays of. Metal Gear Acid is really neat. I've never finished it. I've never touched Metal Gear Acid 2, so I still need to like actually play those before doing any types of videos on them, but... Yeah, we're, we're still in the intro of Metal Gear Acid, or Metal Gear Acid, Metal Gear Survive here. Uh, I haven't 
All I've done is made a guy whose skin texture got mega fucked up in a cutscene, and I hope it's still fucked up. Thank you, everyone, for following Drinking with Skeletons. Shatten Mensch, Guardsman Neckbeard, Elemental Knight. Damn. I'm getting lots of follows. Holy moly. Yes, I'm still messed up. Why is this happening? Why? It's just my head. My skin is fine. What? Why? Why? You made it through the gates of hell. You're now standing in Dite, the world beyond the wormholes. Abandon all hope from here on. Not to mention fear and doubt. Ugh. Fear! I'm feeling it! It's, <laughs> I'm showing it on my face! Waiting up ahead. Better get going. As I mentioned in the briefing, first order of business is to head for base camp. Oh my god. What is going on? You'll need to procure all weapons and equipment on site for this mission. Same goes for food. To enter the gates of hell, you had to shed everything. It's partially affected by camera distance. Like, the f closer the camera gets, the more messed up his face becomes. Oh, my eyeballs! When I'm further away, then I... It's the closest I get to looking normal. There's still a messed up texture seam going right down the middle of my head. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, some people in the chat saying it's probably the tattoo that's fucked up. That would make sense. So yes, I have played a little bit of. Uh, well, guess I never introduced myself. Call me Good Luck. Not a bad name for the pilot of this ship, huh? Your life is low. That's to be expected, though. You just came out of suspended animation. But if your life runs out, there'll just be another one of them. Keep an eye on it. So yeah, it's... I played maybe two or three hours of this game a couple years ago when it first came out, and then I dropped it. It didn't seem bad. It was just, uh... The, the whole Konami shit, all that shit with Konami and Kojima, that wound was still a lot more fresh, and so I was just... I really didn't want to touch this outside of just being a little morbidly curious about it. But some time has passed... Might as well check it out. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of new mechanics in here because it's, like, you know, survival-based. Uh, we got stamina back, like, in Metal Gear Solid 3. Uh, the thing that really throws me through a loop in this game is that, you know, this is just... It plays like Metal Gear Solid 5 with new mechanics, but also the, the control scheme is fairly different, and it throws me through a loop every time. your step. Base camp is still a ways ahead. Base camp is beyond those ruins. Now go. Your journey's just getting started. These are some very frequent objective markers. Here? 
mother base survivor. Hey, you okay? By the way, should mention. Oh, my face! The, you know, cr crystal zombie guys in this game, as well as other enemies. Man, my face. Uh, the artist. The, the concept artist for that stuff is fucking Masahiro Ito, you know, the guy who was the artist for the Silent Hill games. There actually are a couple cool monster designs in this game, but a lot of it is just, you know, guys with crystals poking out of their heads. <laughs> I hope I'm like this for the whole game. That would be great. That's a wanderer. Rather than a detail. Where can you pick them to eliminate it? The fire will probably attract them all. Yes, we uh oh, I should pick up the ammo. Uh yes, yeah, so you do move a lot slower than you do in uh, Phantom Pain, and all of that. They, they definitely adjusted a lot of the stuff just to make the survival gameplay feel a little more <laughs> survival-based. Like, you just are not as strong or as maneuverable as big bosses. I love it. I love the face. Hank was never a normal boy. rubs off on me. I, I just had to shoot my brothers. I'm not gonna die here, that's for sure. I've got a long list of questions for you. What are those things? Where are we? What happened to my unit? Tell me. And yeah, they're... From what level... Like, I know the the general overarching plot of this entire game. And, like, there's a twist to the story that I kind of like. Uh, but from what I played... Like, there's a lot of audio logs to pick up in these codex-style conversations. And, you know, there are a, a cast of characters and all that. but And it just never feels right quite right it doesn't it feels like it's trying to be metal gear and it never quite hits that i'll answer your questions who are you the man you're talking to if you need a name call me good luck and you what do i call you name's reeve <laughs> of course what's so funny nothing forget it now as promised let me answer your other questions the monsters you encountered are called Wanderers. I'll spare you the details, but they were once human like you and I, until they were infected by some unknown life form, which turned them into what you saw. And you were in a world destroyed by Wanderers. Welcome to Detay. It exists in a dimension separate from your own. Unknown life form? Separate dimension? 
What kind of shit are you trying to pull? This is no joke. Whether you believe me or not, look around you. Clearly you realize the predicament you're in. And yeah, Chad is correct in that. After all those cutscenes we just had at the start for like half an hour or so, a lot of the story is delivered through these type of screens. There are still more like full cinematics, but they kind of come closer to the end, if I remember correctly. Which brings me to this. I want to give you an opportunity. Work with us. Do that, and I'll make sure you have a ticket out of there. We're your only lifeline. Surely you're not going to turn that down. When this is over, I'm going to send you to hell myself. I like that answer. Now, as before, head through those ruins to base camp. How you go about that is up to you and the captain. Captain? You mean this clown? That's me. You have an objection? Captain Hank. You're the ones who went there to complete a mission in the first place. I didn't think you would have a problem taking orders from someone else. All right, whatever. Okay, I've got an idea. Like good luck said, we need to head to this base camp. But we have to make sure we don't bring any of those things with us. Luckily, I have some C4 an engineer in my unit was carrying. More than enough to bring this place down. I'll go plant the C4. Meanwhile, you get on out of here and secure our escape route. All right, let's get this show on the road. Don't you run off without me, Captain. Wow, MSF soldiers and Cypher soldiers working together. Crazy. So yeah, there's a lot of crafting and a bunch of other shit. Uh, there's also, like, melee weapons. It's not just guns. So we have stuff like this spear. Uh, I've got enough materials to make this shit. I might as well. What are you doing? Go secure our escape. Simple barricade shouldn't be that hard to destroy. Try out that weapon you crafted. In fact, a lot of the early combat in this game, if I remember correctly, is more this melee stuff because ammo is pretty scarce and also, you know, crafting materials you gotta pick up. Yeah, we have the... Like, the threat ring was kind of there, in a way, in Metal Gear Solid 5, but now we straight just have, like, the Metal Gear Solid 4-style threat ring, which I always kind of liked. I thought the threat ring was pretty handy. Okay, good. Mashing the button so let's see lockpick faster. Not entirely sure how sensitive their hearing is, so I will do a slow crouching walk.
climb it. Base camp is just ahead. There's also like some multiplayer and co-op stuff in this game, which I've, you know, never tried. I'm I'm curious what that stuff is like. It could be pretty fun, I think. Yeah, like Crouch got switched from A from A to B, which why? Making my way out now. Action button used to be Y, now it's A. Everything switched around. Fuck. Also, thank you, Jocko93, for gifting all those subs. Damn. I wonder how the multiplayer in Phantom Pain is doing right now. All the base invasion stuff. feel like you gotta earn the late title card drop, and I don't think this game earned it, really. Man. If Miller right now wasn't like so into just screaming they played us like a damn fiddle like he could just look outside and see this fucked up wormhole sucking everything up <laughs> yeah does Skullface know about this? My shiny, shiny head. My crystal head. Cardboard box sent me to hell. This sucks. Uh, for people coming in here late, no, I didn't design my head like that. I put a little tattoo on my chin, and we're all thinking that tattoo texture it has fucked up, and it's caused my head to become crystalline. <laughs> God, I forgot there's still more cutscenes. 
people went A-OK. -okay. I know you've just woken up and you're probably wondering what the hell's going on, but we're short on time. I'll give you the gist of things while we wait for the wormhole digger to finish starting up. Okay, so basically, I'm going to be sending you to another dimension. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure you have plenty of questions. I do. I haven't got time to answer them. What? Just listen to me. Hmm. Take a look at this photo. 1968. South Vietnam. It was taken in the town in the north by a journalist accompanying American forces. He took it right before he was killed. Killed by the thing in this photo. And that thing used to be human. Don't believe me. In the section, we have a name for humans that have turned into these monsters. We call them Wanderers. They get infected by this life form we've yet to fully understand. And they end up like that. Wanderers are extremely ferocious. They attack anyone they see indiscriminately. But the worst part is... Look at this concept art. Even when you destroy a wanderer, the life form that infected the person doesn't die. If we don't do something about them, before we know it, there will be enough of them to destroy the human race. Fortunately for us, back then they appeared in a part of Vietnam where American forces were fighting. Phew. That meant we were able to send in a team, in amongst our boys, to wipe them out fast. We got every last one of them. We made the operation look like one of the massacres that occurred throughout the country. Good. Of course, there's a reason this section was able to detect their presence. We've known about this life form for decades now, and about the world it comes from. While it looks a lot like ours, it's populated by wanderers. It's like a vision of hell. I just love that on top of section first observed <laughs> warden cliff section i fucking love that on top of the patriots and the philosophers and cypher there's this fourth fucking thing that's investigating alternate dimension zombie men <laughs> called the warden cliff section well shift the balance of power in the world as you know six months and they want to extract energy from hell and XOF, yes. That event enabled us to obtain the coordinates of their world. So for the first time since our research began, we sent out a manned expedition team, the Caron Corps. But we lost all contact with the Corps a while back. Our assumption is they're all dead. You'll have two mission objectives. First, recover the research data the Kiron Corps left behind and gather Kuban energy. Second, rescue any core survivors you come across. I'm aware that ideally we'd be sending a team that's fully equipped for this kind of mission. But there's no time for that. Not with the Hound of Hell after us. Plus, with the energy we have at the moment, wormhole will only be able to transport one person you'd rather sit this one out sorry but you don't get a choice the reason being you're already infected with that life form I was telling you about and if you don't want to turn into one of those things you better do what I tell you the Kiron Corps' research data should include information on a way to prevent a person from turning into a wanderer. Looks like the digger's ready. When you arrive on the other side, start by heading for the base camp that the Corps used. I'll be issuing all instructions by radio. Guess I'll see you in hell. Yeah, it's just wild that this game was able to get this many cutscenes at the start to justify <laughs> justify its its setting and all that shit. Like, man, it's definitely you know most of the cutscenes in this game are front loaded, but still, I can't believe they've got this many for this spin off Metal Gear game. 
Like, it's really going for it. It's really going for the way, like, Metal Gear Solid 3 and shit was set up with the, the amount of cutscenes and, and stuff, but, like... It don't work. I just don't think it, it works. Ah! <laughs> Neat. Good. Looks like you lost them. That's base camp you can see from there. Make your way to his location. Oh man, Metal Gear Survive, everybody. We've got the AI pod from Peace Walker here. It's just a whole bunch of shit. Life forms detected. Waking from emergency sleep mode. Rebooting. Not, not the, the boss AI pod, one of the other ones. Standalone operational support program, Virgil AT-9, reboot complete. It has been 34 days, 9 hours, 12 minutes, and 2 seconds. Commencing debrief. Take a closer look. They aren't with the Karen Corps. God, right, I forgot about that there were two voices for the AI pod, and the male one is just, like, a guy pinching his nose a little bit and doing a little robot voice. And, and it's just it's really irritating to me. <laughs> Line of communications with section authenticated. Personal data acquired. Welcome aboard Karen's boat, Captain. Why don't I begin by introducing myself? I am Standalone Operational Support Program, Virgil 89. It's nice to meet you. Oh boy. The intro just keeps going, huh? But, like, it doesn't grab you the same way a Metal Gear intro usually does. Uh, by the way, I still get a lot of questions for it. I think I saw in the chat earlier. Uh, we will, at some point, do a Death Stranding Let's Play. I just need to do a second playthrough of it, because I've never touched the director's cut. That adds a bunch of new content to it. Uh, that seems fairly significant, both gameplay mechanics and... and some other stuff, so I gotta play through that a second time before uh, we can do that. <sighs> Anyways, I believe we are getting close to the actual gameplay. Monsters, now talking machine. No need to be surprised. She was originally the Caron Corps support AI. They were scheduled to rendezvous there. Internal database voice print match. It's been a long time, good luck. It sure has, Virgil. Sorry to spring this on you so soon, but I'd like to give you a new mission. You can find the details in the captain's department. Well, this was unexpected. The wormhole's closing as I speak. Probably have to plan to thanks for this. Virgil, you take over at the captain's mission support. I'm counting on you. And yeah, I think the explanation chat for why the Karen Core's AI pod looks just like Huey's AI pods is it's an asset they can reuse from Metal Gear Solid 5. Good luck's gotta go dark. Hope we'll be alright. Do not worry. I will assume the role of the captain's mission support. 
We've downloaded mission information from the device you connected. Our support systems are already up and running. Like that voice is just so aw <laughs> so awful. According to this information, the Karen Corps has already ceased its activities. The captain's mission is to recover the core's data and gather Kuban energy. The mission also includes exploring Dite and rescuing any survivors. Is this correct? So, the two of you are talking to each other. What's the deal with that? There's some reason there are two of you? That reason is unknown. Originally, when I was participating in the Karen Corps' operations, he didn't exist. What I deduce from this is he is a personality created out of necessity amid the unforeseen situation that forced me to enter emergency sleep mode. And what might that unforeseen situation be? Unknown. When it occurred, all data I acquired while supporting the core was lost. And what exactly do you know? Were AIs designed to offer special operations support? I imagine we'll be able to provide you and the captain with valuable information for your mission. All right, so why don't you start being useful? Kind of wish the protagonist was just Reeves so that we could play as somebody who actually, you know, talks. I don't know the first thing about this place or the monsters here. Tell us everything you know. This world is located on the other end of a wormhole or a distortion in space time. For convenience, we call this world Dite. We've learned in the course of our investigation that Dite's environment is very similar to that of Earth. However, it is decisively different from Earth in factors such as the presence of wanderers and the dust. Dust? The dust is a mist-like substance made up of micro-sized particles of unknown composition. It covers the greater part of Dite. It is extremely toxic to humans, and without some form of countermeasure, a person cannot operate within it unimpeded. How do we get back to our world? There is a way, though this is not currently possible. Why not? To return home, we need to activate a device called the Digger, which is capable of generating large wormholes. The Karen Corps intended to use the Digger to God. <laughs> It's highly likely that the data you will recover will describe how to activate it. Looks like my only way out of here is to help you with this mission. Let's split up to look. Just need to find this core's data. If I may be so Oh far, my god, Virgil, shut the fuck up! We be the one doing the searching. Mr. Reeve, sir. I detect in you localized hyperthermia, most likely caused by severe inflammation. I do not recommend staying on your feet for too long. You can read me like a book, huh? Well, I think we have a plan. By the way, this game actually does have some kind of cool stuff in it. Like, like if I remember correctly, once we actually have some fucking gameplay, um, and I'm a person who enjoys long cutscenes in games, by the way, uh, but there's like some optional stuff for like wormholes open up and like Metal Gear Rex or Ray, I think, will just jump out of it and you have boss fights with them and stuff. Let's get started right away. It's going to be a long road, but remember, Captain, a journey of a thousand miles wasn't built in a day. I think the expression is either a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step or Rome wasn't built in a day. Isn't it? Oh my god. Like, it's trying to pull out quotes and, and references to literature and, and fucking history and all this other shit as a way to be like, hey, Kojima, you know, is always reading shit and researching shit and that stuff always makes it in to his stuff as character names and all this other stuff that's always generally very unsubtle. But there's something about the stuff in this one that just feels like they're trying to ape it and it's not working. Is that so? Sorry, Captain. Looks like the accident did a number on her bits and bites. Bits and bites. And thank you. The bits and bites. 
Before you begin your mission in earnest, let's go over some basics. Open your iDroid. Uh -huh. Unlike us, you humans need food and water to live. What? Be sure to eat or drink when you become hungry or thirsty. So, food and water increases your maximum health and stamina. Speaking of which, let's find you something to eat. Open your iDroid's map screen. The map displays terrain you yourself have visited. As we've lost the data the core collected, You'll have to map unexplored terrain yourself. No, I don't believe you get the Metal Gear Solid 3 fork in this game, sadly. Also show your current position. However, this does not apply outside of these areas. Yes, I understand. You'll have to study the lay of the land to figure out where you are. The situation report informs you of the current situation. At the moment, you need to secure food and water. Information is added to the report as the situation warrants, so be sure to check it on a regular basis. Now, let's get back <laughs> to finding food and water. We've detected a place with usable resources. Begin by heading there. We've marked their predicted location on the map. Place a guide marker. You've placed a <laughs> Yeah, it's the game has a very bad first impression just because destination to where like, it takes a little bit to get into the gameplay, which could be fine on its own, but then you get introduced to the absolute worst AI tutorial characters that talk so fucking slow. You placed a map marker. Now hunt an animal to obtain food. Whoop. Food has more nutritional value when you cook it. Also risk getting sick if you eat food wrong, so keep that in mind as well. Whoop. Food and drink you obtain can be selected and used from the inventory screen. It probably goes without saying that by eating and drinking, you satiate your hunger what? and quench your thirst. Might as well pick this shit up, too. Since I'm here. Yeah, I do remember this being basically a game where you're... I just picked up a chair. Uh, you're basically just constantly picking shit up. All the time. Just hold down the X button all the time. Need to cook this shit. Allow us to introduce another feature the use of stamps. Placing a stamp on the map allows you to make a note of a place you visited. Uh huh. This completes your first mission. When you return to base camp, 
will automatically send to the storehouse any resources you've obtained. Resources stored appear as a report. And don't worry, you can... I've detected a new memory board. Oh boy. Sync with me to update your iDroid's data. Yeah, this, this is uh, a very bad tutorial. It is... It's not like a uniquely bad tutorial either. Like, you, I feel like I see a lot of games that do this, but it's just... There's a lot of games where they... The tutorials just give you the information you need in the wrong fucking... In the wrong order. Like, it's dumping all of this... System shit on us when... That stuff should come later. We just went over some basics, but this was time well spent. <laughs> yeah. After all, this knowledge will be yep. indispensable to. May the rest of the mission. Uh huh. Now then, on to re yep. The core set up observation posts around Dita. We detected a memory board during your exploration earlier. Learn recipe for normal fence. Captain, during your exploration earlier, we detected a memory board left yeah, behind. Yeah, yup. When you craft a weapon, you <laughs> can equip it off the bat or send it to the storehouse. Also, when you... All right then. <laughs> Go and retrieve the memory board. Just it on your iDroid. Just go behind the pod and just unplug it. Holy fuck. <laughs> Man. Anyways, made some food. Oh shit, dude. Constantly hitting more and more triggers every step I take to override the last fucking tutorial. <sighs> All right, <laughs> we're uh, we have a very high pitched voice that we never get to hear. At least when you eat food and drink stuff, it's. They tried to mimic the way Snake... The, the sounds that Snake would make when eating food in Metal Gear Solid 3, the mm, mm, ah thing. It's the same, it's the same thing as, as 3 there. And it's like... You know, the idea of like, okay, let's make a Metal Gear spinoff game that's more survival-based, where you gotta eat and drink and shit, and, you know, just kind of be out in the wilderness more or something, and kind of... Iterating on Metal Gear Solid 3 survival mechanics, that sounds like a good fucking idea to me. But also, zombies. Wormholes. Detay. What was that? Fruit. Cub. Picking up some cub. Yes, even when I was cooking the, the meat I got earlier, even that requires Kuban energy for some reason, even though you just thrown it over a fucking fire, but okay. Nearby. Nearly there. 
When facing off against a horde of wanderers, utilize defense units you have crafted, such as fences, to attack from a protected position and maintain the upper hand. It's possible to use wormholes to summon units to your location as well. I didn't build any fences, so we're just going to have to not deal with that, but yes. There are some, like, mechanics that are kind of fun in this game, genuinely, of, like, you know, you, uh... Yes, this game has, like, deployable tactical fences. Like, you just drop a segment of a fence right in front of you, which can block enemies, and with stuff like the, uh... The pipe I've got here, the spear, you can just stab people through the holes in the fence. And that's honestly an extremely good tactic for a lot of the game, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yes, once you're actually let go to, to do stuff and not get tutorialed to death, there is, you know, some okay gameplay because, you know, it's just Metal Gear Solid V's gameplay. Fortunately, with just kind of zombie AI rather than guards or soldiers, but still. Whoop! Alright, well, whatever. And it is genuinely kind of fun to stab the- Oh shit, I'm about to die now. Uh... It is genuinely fun to stab stuff in the head with the... The spear. It feels crunchy, it feels good. Just grab this chair. Close that door. So they're probably gonna come in, yeah. It's true, that wouldn't have happened if I had a tactical fence on me. these sacks. Hello. Yeah, I thought that was a dead end. Aw, oh, man, if that fence wasn't there, that could just be a little secret alleyway to, to sidle through or something. Man, that would, would have been a fun little sneaky avenue. I don't have any, like, empty magazines to throw yet, unfortunately.
Okay. I'm doing better sneaking out than I was in. <laughs> yeah, I'm also curious if my... My, the issue with my face will resolve itself when I reload the game. I really hope it doesn't, because I think what happened to my skin is a far better hank than I could have ever made normally. Like, I don't want this glitch to go away, please. I don't want dirty water yet. Don't have a way to clean that shit yet. Might as well eat, though. Got some berries. Mmm. Mm. A delicious lunch of wild berries. But yeah, the basic loop of this game, from what I remember, is... So, especially once we start venturing out into the area over here where the mist is, like... Um, you get, like, a breathing apparatus so that you can actually, like, survive in the mist without... Or the dust without breathing it in and dying. Um, so you have, like, a, an oxygen tank that's slowly draining. So you have a limited amount of time to, you know, go on little expeditions outside of... the outside of Mother Base. Um, and eventually you can start getting more O2 tanks or upgrading your O2 tanks so you can go out for longer. And you're basically going out on expeditions to gather resources to upgrade Mother Base because there is like a base building mechanic where you can place different structures like freely throughout the base, including, you know, facilities, but also, you know, defensive things, fences, turrets, all that stuff, because... Uh, this game's also kind of like a base defense thing. The base will come under attack and you've got to defend it, you know, with all the stuff you built, which is genuinely kind of fun, honestly. Um, but yeah, it is kind of fun to go out, try to get as many resources and rescue people as you can before you run out of oxygen and come back and like, you know... It's, it's solid. It's just... It's just a little weird. When you return to base camp, the map screen is updated. We analyze your travel log and send the results to your iDroid. Time to analyze the data. Please synchronize your iDroid with me here. The data on the memory board you obtained becomes available to us when you connect the board to us. No way! Let's go ahead and take a look at the data on it. Analysis complete. The board contains research data on DTE, primarily on Wanderers and Kuban Energy, as well as operational records. You can examine the details on your device. So that's part one of the captain's mission in the back. No. The data that was recovered is only part of the entire record. To recover all of the data, further expeditions will be required. But on these expeditions, please be ever more careful. This world may be home to threats even greater than those we are aware of. For a machine, you're pretty damn vague. Did you learn anything from this data you got? After connecting with the memory board, part of our internal memory was restored. According to this data, the Karen Corps was more than equipped to handle the Wanderers. And how'd the unit get wiped out? Unknown. The data we recovered didn't shed any light on this. With more data, our memory may be fully restored. Continue your searches. We must find out what happened to the core. Oh man, sandbag foothold.
Thank you for following, PC Freak. With the additional information available to me, I've detected multiple new memory boards. The details are available in the situation report. Captain. <laughs> Captain. Something I have to tell you. Can you talk faster? Memory data successfully restored. New equipment can be developed. Craft the wormhole collector. This is needed to carry out the remainder of your mission. Like... <laughs> Captain. <laughs> like, he got even slower for that sense. Just like madness. Okay, so yeah, there's a bunch of shit you can craft. Um, ooh, a canteen. Yeah, I want that. I got a lot of materials. I can make that. Uh, yeah, we need some medical sprays. Just have the one for now. Let's see, we got mines, flag beacons lures. Yeah, I need to make some, some... I need to be able to divert attention. Yeah, well, we will not forget tactical fences. Let's see, we got wooden fence, we got normal fence. Oh, I got a plenty of iron. Fuck yeah, let's just make this. Make a bunch of this shit. We got plenty of Cuban, Cuban energy. There we go. Um... Just do that for now. What have we got for gear? Oh, yeah. Hats. And yeah, the different gear you can craft also has, like, stats for defense and all that shit. Uh... Oh, wow. Jeff Harris with the $25. Thank you so much. Also, is this... Wait... Jeff Harris. Hello. Uh, anyways, yeah, we need the wormhole extraction device. We need to be able to Fulton stuff. And here's the air tank, which I can't build yet. I need to find a damaged air tank first. Uh, but yeah. These are both the same defense, so I think it's really just down to aesthetic. I don't really... <clears throat> I don't want to hide my bald head, though. It's all weird and shiny. Yeah, we can definitely do the chest rig. Do those gloves. I want to be bald. Let's stay bald for now. <laughs> Maybe eventually we'll have a better hat, but I just don't want to... My crystal dome. So do I need to repair any of this shit? My machete... Ain't great. Also, what other weapons can we make? We got a crowbar. We got a rusty machete. Hmm. Got a bat. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. And yeah, there are guns, but it looks like for the the Berghoff, at least I need the advanced weapon workbench. Still, actually, for both guns. I need that. So it's like... I don't know. There's part of me that really wants to, to like this game. Okay, so I'm going to have the bow in the back. So then... Can this be put on the side then, like my machete? Or the crowbar? Yeah, it's on the hip. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Do you need to craft ammo for the bow, though? Like... Okay, I've got 30 arrows for it right now. So I guess that's probably... Oh, Jar Sheriff. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's just, yeah, that's the name it gave me when it popped up there. If you need to, I can edit that out in the VOD. Just let me know. Oh, arrows are the last tab in that thing. Oh, yes, yeah, in the ammo. There we go. It's all good? Okay. Just want to make sure. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll make a couple more. Just throw that in the, uh, repository. So, yeah, it's like... I don't know. It's not bad. This game is not bad. Also, I need to go back to, uh, where these sheep are. I need more food. Any around? Doesn't look like it, actually. Oh, wait. There's one. The sheep go extinct if you hunt them all? Okay, damn. Too late. Rip to that sheep. Okay, anyways. Raw meat is dangerous. Oh, I know. You've told me. Doing so will make you sick. Gerbil milk you stew! Cook it properly. Gerbil milk! Milk of the gerbil! Gerbil milk! Oh, I've got a potato. Can I have a baked potato? Gerbil milk. Mmm, gerbil milk. It makes you run fast. Gerbil milk. <laughs> Okay, hey, which thing is this? Okay, that's the storage facility. Um, this guy wants to fucking talk to me. Right, there's a bunch of like daily mission things and weekly missions and you get random loot boxes of materials. Might as well. Yeah, the, and then there's this fucking coin shop. You can buy the coins with real money and get, hey, wh how about you get the or you know, Gray Fox's helmet or the tuxedo? Huh? How about the boss's outfit, which I can't wear because it's gender locked? Cosmetics, folks. What? That's a twist. Get Twisted Metal out of here. Ah, uh, yes, a premium boost. I need a 60-day premium boost to my experience points, please. Yeah, we've also got the orange box, you know. Oh, boy. And so yeah, there's like an actual little base building thing here where you get to play shit all around. So we got a medical workstation, and I can build that. Like, I do genuinely enjoy that there's like this little base building thing. I kind of always wanted something like that in Metal Gear Solid Five. I wish the base management was more involved in that game. And I also... God, I just wish 
the bass in Metal Gear Solid Five was more lively. I was so excited to actually be able to physically run around Mother Base, because that's what I wanted so bad when playing Peace Walker, but it actually had less personality than Peace Walker's base. Okay, we do have an advanced weapons workbench here. But I don't know. We'll... I think we're okay for now. So, gotta check out over here. I don't know if I would say Peace Walker is secretly the best Metal Gear, but Peace Walker is really high up there for me, just from a fun factor standpoint. Got a new chatter. Are there still never be game over people? Yeah. Very few. I still check up on the Never Be Game Over subreddit every once in a while, and it's... Honestly, it's mostly... It's not that active anymore, and a lot of it is just people kind of shitting on stuff or shitposting. Every once in a while, you get somebody talking about, like, Ooh, what about Act 3? I have a new theory, whatever, and it just, like, never really goes anywhere. Yeah, this game definitely also slow paced. Is nearby. Prepare yourself for what may lie ahead, and then go secure its data. Like, whenever Kojima finally does, you know, something. Oh man, all these empty bottles. Like, whenever Kojima finally, like, makes a peep about something, about a game or something, or there's some new trailer that looks vaguely Kojima-ish, a lot of those people, I think, will, you know, they'll hear the secret phrase that activates, activates all their conspiratorial thoughts, and they'll be back doing the same shit, but... Give me that chair. I detect that you're hungry. Your mission requires that you look after yourself, Captain. Access the memory board and secure its data. Thank you, uh... Fitbit for telling me I'm hungry. Got the damaged damage air tank. Guys are coming now. Hey, remember uh, just a few weeks ago when fucking Shinzo Abe died and uh, those rumors got spread around that Kojima was the guy that killed him? That was something, all right. Data acquired from memory board. I will analyze it. Return to base camp. We good? Whoop, well, there you are. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey guys, we got guys falling down, <laughs> falling down the hill. I checked the body you discovered against the data available to me. The deceased was a member of the Kara Corps. His name was Joel Martin. Cause of death appears to be blood loss from gunshot wounds. I'm not sure if going back to base camp despawns enemies or not, but... Oh, is this thing gonna... Yeah, that thing's gonna be in the dust. I might as well just go back right now. Instead of trying to do two missions at once before returning. Time to analyze the data. 
Please synchronize your iDroid with me here. Uh, chat, no, I have not beaten this before. Um, don't post spoilers, just in case someone in the chat doesn't want to hear those spoilers. Uh, I kind of know the general overall plot of this game. I do kind of like the, the plot twist in this game, but... With this memory board data, another phase of my memory restoration is complete. You can now craft an air tank. Was the air tank in here or was it a separate thing? Oh, that was that was just gear, wasn't it? It wasn't a gadget. There we go. Ugh, my face. You've prepared an air tank. You can now enter the dust. Having crafted an air tank, you can now operate within the dust. However, the tank is only so big. If the oxygen in it runs out, your life will begin to drop. If you're low on oxygen, you can use Kuban energy to replenish it. You can take advantage of this feature from your iDroid. Uh-huh. Here, let's get some... How much water do I have left, actually? <sighs> I forget how bad it is to drink dirty water in this game. You can barf from doing this? Well, it would be fun to see me barf, maybe. Okay, so it's going to take me a little while, I think, to get over to this other destination. So, um, go over the archive. Guess what? Lots of things to listen to. <laughs> Investigation day three. The purpose of this voice log is to serve as a record of my activities here separate from my official reports to Wardenclyff Section HQ. I find this place to be much like our own world, except everything is in ruins. It's known as Dite, a name borrowed from a city in Hell that appeared in Dante's The Divine Comedy. Personally, I don't believe in Hell, but if it did exist, I imagine it'd look a lot like this. I'm Chloe Dubois, a researcher assigned to Wardenclyffe Section and member of the Caron Corps, which was formed to investigate this world. For those of you that slept through your college lit class, Caron is also taken from Dante's seminal work. He's the ferryman who carries departed souls across the river to the afterlife. It was good luck who came up with both names. Good luck was always a fan of Dante's works, but I never cared. A memory board is near. <laughs> Great. You are likely to encounter God damn it. Shut up! <laughs> well, it's not like we miss anything important. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. My role in the Corps is focused on research, but I have also been given authority over this particular investigation. I guess you could say I'm something of this squad leader. My father invested heavily in this project, which played no small part in my assignment, for sure. But we need not get into that. Even though I am technically the leader, the base camp facility is actually managed by Virgil AT9, an artificial intelligence developed by Goodluck himself. 
Apparently, she is responsible for communications, data analysis, and facility operations. She uses the instruments we carry on us to manage the data we gather in regards to our experiments, as well as the collection of the Kuban energy necessary for controlling the wormhole. To be honest, Good Luck's programming is nothing short of revolutionary. And that is putting it mildly. It's almost as if his mind alone is centuries ahead of us. Perhaps the most interesting thing is that Virgil's responses to our queries are strangely human-like. She speaks in a solemn tone and has a tendency to be rather rigid at times. But she also possesses a keen sense of humor that I never had. Damn it! It boggles the mind to think how many people were used as reference points to develop her personality and character. At any rate, I should be able to work towards my objective starting tomorrow. I am here to research wormhole-related technology, as well as investigate the wanderer's ecology. One of the main objectives of my research is to find a way for us to manually control these wormholes. There is a material in this world known as Kuban energy, which we believe is essential to controlling wormholes. As such, we must harvest as much of it as possible. If we can eventually perfect this technology, we will be able to instantly transport objects anywhere on the planet. Indeed, we may finally be able to realize the world system that Nikola Tesla proposed. <laughs> the controls are fucking me up. A should not be dive. The technology is incomplete, and opinions as to its viability vary widely within our section. I understand Good Luck's belief that we should proceed with caution. But as a scientist, it's impossible for me to ignore the new possibilities that will be open to us. I managed to overcome Good Luck's personal objections and be assigned to the team in order to continue my wormhole research on the cutting edge of the field. I figured that if I didn't, I would never be able to catch up with him. It is my desire to be the one to finally find that which has managed to elude Good Luck for so long. Whoop, oh, hello. Not before I put a whole chair in my pocket, thank you. Oh yeah, that first log is something like five minutes. Almost five minutes, I believe. Is there more stuff to grab? I mean, I could break this shit, but... Sadly, I don't think there's any normal CQC grabs or anything in this game. I think it's just that backstab you can do.
Oh man, this is a lot of crates to break. I can't... Can't just not. Okay, that's... That stuff's covered in netting. Can I not break that or something? Thank you for following, sleep criminal. Okay. Oh, can my shit actually bounce off stuff here? Probably can't jump jump from this height. That would almost certainly hurt me. So I could jump down here though. Oh, wait. Let's fault in this dude. There we go. That worked out fine. That's all right. That went okay. Yeah, it's a wormhole, Fulton. This whole game's all about wormholes. Uh, if you can Fulton guys, I believe you get more um, energy from them than if you just kill them and grab stuff off the ground that they drop. Partial memory restoration complete. I've also reassembled fragmented data. With this data recovery, you can now use the skill trainer. By using the power of Kuban energy to strengthen your body, you can learn special abilities called skills. Why do they make him talk so slow? They're all beneficial to you, so try to learn as many as you can. Go in there. Oh, <laughs> the zoom made that a lot better. I detect a memory board within the dust. Begin your search. Oh, God. What do I want? Okay, no, there is some CQC's shit. You just gotta unlock it. Movement speed? Yes, please! But I can't do that yet. I need some skill points. Movement speed! Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kuban Energy, use it for a whole bunch of stuff, crafting, getting yourself more oxygen, but also it's just experience points that you use to get skill points, and then you use it to get skills, but... I'm not sure why Dexterity is symbolized as a brain. I don't know. 
Okay, so... Yeah, there's also a cure screen. You can get injured like in Metal Gear Solid 3, and you gotta use a bunch of different things to, to cure the injuries. I'm okay for now and everything. Yeah. All right. Whoop! My inverse kinematics are freaking out. Just a little bit. Okay, so we've got some more stuff to do here. We've got some animals. Also got another memory board. Oh, I can only put one marker down? Okay. Um, oh, I completed one of my dumbass missions. Oh boy. Random cases of materials. Time to open them. Great. Like, I like a lot of the setup, but yeah, there is some stuff that just feels like fucking busy work. Oh boy, I've got some other cosmetics for free. Metal Gear Rex head. Balloon trap. Bottles, sure. Give me, give me this stuff. Why not? Great. Right, there's emotes that you gotta pay. You gotta use their, their currency for, so you can just buy these with real money. Uh, it's just stuff like that that I seem just like... Uh, just makes me a little tired. Anyways, we got some walking to do here. What time is it? Oh, actually, it's almost time for me to go. I forgot. It's almost 4.30. Uh, I gotta go somewhere at 5. But yeah, the, the game is okay. Um, I think the, the start of the game... Like, the way they try to do the tutorials is really annoying. And it's, like, non-stop for a while, and it's made far more irritating by the annoying AI voices, especially the one that sounds like Squidward a little bit. Um, yeah, the monetization stuff is bad, of course. It's just kind of... crap. Um, and it just doesn't feel quite enough like Metal Gear to me. Like, it's got some good ideas in here and shit. But it just feels like... It feels like a really impressive fan mod. Like, the writing just doesn't... get there. Like, ooh, we got a guy named Good Luck, and it's just like... I don't know. The dumbass names that Kojima characters have. For some reason, Good Luck just feels too... normal. I don't know. Anyways... Thanks for watching me stream Metal Gear Survive. Maybe I'll stream more of this in the future. Um, I streamed Wednesday just a few days ago, and today is... Yeah, today's Saturday, so... If my schedule permits, I might try to keep streaming Wednesdays and Saturdays for a little bit here. And, uh... See if that is an okay schedule. 
Maybe we can keep doing Metal Gear Survive, because I, I am certainly never doing a Let's Play of Metal Gear Survive. But yes, thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. I guess just keep an eye on my Twitter or check the schedule section on my Twitch channel to see when the next streams will be. And we'll see you later. One more thing, just something you'd like to say about video games on behalf of everybody in the country. Play them, they're fun. Totally awesome.